Ice Age. On the surface, a film about three lovable misfit friends on their journey to reunite in a lost child with his family. But under the surface lies a fundamental insight into the value of friendship groups in shaping our very lives. Diego's journey throughout Ice Age lays bare how influential the people we surround ourselves really are in shaping the course of our lives, in moulding the very environment that nurtures our personality, in shaping the lens through which we view the world. As the fabric of vengefulness and deceit woven into his old pack threatens to consume him, we watch as Diego transitions from a herd whose culture is one of revenge, violence and deception, to one whose culture is underpinned by the nurturing of one another's greatest strengths, challenging one another to improve, love and respect, of people willing to risk their own lives for one another. And we see how this shapes Diego as an individual, how it saves him from being consumed by Soto's rage and blind obsession for revenge. Diego learns the power of our pack and how it can bring the very best or the very worst of ourselves into existence. Human beings are social creatures. We thrive in highly coordinated groups. Individually, we are designed to learn social cues, coordinate and align our behaviour with those around us. A vast array of scientific research highlights that social rejection, even the threat of social rejection itself, causes activation in brain areas associated with fear, such as the amygdala. Conformity, on the other hand, can remedy this heightened fear response, because with safety in numbers, confirming our beliefs, actions or behaviours aligned with the majority provides us with solace in the knowledge that we are not abnormal, that no matter how extreme or nuanced our belief, we do not risk rejection from the group. This tendency to mimic thoughts and behaviours of the group suggests that simply being in the presence of a group of people inadvertently causes us to align our thoughts, behaviours and ideologies with those around us. To keep ourselves in the warm confines of conformity, we rely on two independent yet related types of social cues. First, we look to others for information about what's going on, informational cues, and second, we look to others to see what to do about it, normative cues. It's a natural imperative to avoid exile from the herd because of the sheer number of benefits we derive from being a part of one, including companionship, sex, safety and security. But what if this basic human evolutionary drive for survival and reproduction lulls us into a full sense of security when it comes to being part of a group? What if our tribe shapes far more than our mere survival or ability to reproduce, but rather our very existence? Thousands of years ago, decisions were far simpler. Be part of the largest, strongest group to survive. Now, however, we no longer face the risk of an axe planting itself into the back of our skulls during the night. Now we as humans must navigate the social world seeking more than just the basic evolutionary requirements. We must choose a friend group that helps nurture our most valued traits. A group that not only challenge and encourage each other, but also support and care for one another. As we hone in on the saber-toothed tiger Diego, we'll learn that the herd, the tribe, the friend group that we decide to adopt as a fundamental part of our lives, shapes more than just our evolutionary drive to survive and reproduce in this world. It shapes the very essence of who we are. From what we can gather through Diego's most savoured childhood memories, like his dad bringing home a gazelle at Christmas for dinner, Diego is born into a pack raised upon the predatory instincts of a survival and herd, just as nature intended. Just before the story unfolds, Diego's pack were attacked by humans who ended up killing half of their group and using their skin for clothing. This left five saber tooth tigers left, Soto the pack leader, Diego the lieutenant and three others. We realise from the very beginning of the film that a real lust for revenge has been woven into the very fabric of his pack. From the top down, his primary goal of revenge is instantiated upon every level of the group, a sole desire to enact revenge on the humans for what they did. Just as Soto says, look at the cute little baby, Diego. Isn't it nice he'd be joining us for breakfast? It wouldn't be breakfast without him, especially since his daddy wiped out half of our pack and wears our skin to keep warm. An eye for an eye, don't you think? It is also clear that the pack runs on a hierarchy. Soto makes the decisions, backed up by Diego, and the others fall in line, they conform. It's Soto that begins to weave this desire for revenge and violence against the human into the fabric of the pack, and of course the pack reciprocates. As a result, the group become obsessed with enacting revenge upon the humans, and the fundamental values of the pack mutate from survival to revenge and deceit, hell-bent on getting their own back on the humans at any expense of their own lives. This culture of ruthless deception and vengefulness corrupts the group at every level, culminating in Diego himself being willing to kill the human baby, deceive and manipulate those around him, and lure his so-called newfound friends to their gruesome deaths, all in the name of the pack. Diego's initial herd is led by a neurotic leader, whose unstable and immoral obsession with revenge nurtures a culture of despair, hatred and deceitfulness, to the point where each member is ready to stab the other in the back, as they maintain a hierarchy of importance, undermining any semblance of true friendships they made along the way. The catalyst for the story that truly uproots Diego from his life is the pack's decision to attack the human camp, and specifically Diego's task of pursuing the head of the clan's family, a mother and the son, only for the mother to escape his grasp at the last minute for a waterfall. 
Soto blames the ogre for not doing his job and exiles him from the pack until he retrieves the baby, claiming that if not for the baby, they'll eat him instead. This scene is the perfect personification of the group's volatile nature, as Diego is exiled from the group on the grounds of revenge or bust. Diego has two options, either give his life to the boundless pursuit of revenge that the group now identifies with, or be consumed by the group as a sacrifice for his weakness. Little does Diego know at this point, both choices represent the same end, losing his life to the ruthless, aggressive, hatred-filled nature of the group. As Diego's search for the baby commences, we learn that the child has landed in the fateful hands of Manny and Sid. When Diego finds them and fails to claim the baby for his own, he's forced to employ Plan B, feign companionship and steal the baby at the opportune moment. It's clear to see the beliefs and values of Soto's pack reflect Diego's actions, with his first move being to deceive Manny and Sid, convincing them the baby is his. He then threatens Sid behind Manny's back, claiming, You won't always have Jumbo around to protect you, and when that day comes, I suggest you watch your back, because I'll be chewing on it. That same night, he meets with Soto and promises to bring the baby, Manny and Sid all back to a particular meeting point. Here we see Diego fully integrated with his group's identity as he agrees to lure all three of them to their deaths, all in the name of revenge. The sacrifice for being an integral part of Soto's pack is deception, violence, vengeance and malice. But throughout Diego's journey with his newfound herd, he begins to realise what a different herd has to offer. And although at first he struggles to comprehend the possibility of leaving his old life, his old friends, his old routines and everything he knows, he begins to realise that this might be for the best. But the life-changing decisions still loom over him, something foreshadowed as Diego pretends to kill Sid to save him from the same rhinos Manny saved him from before. With his jaws around Sid's neck, we begin to wonder what Diego truly wants. And then the lessons from his journey with them begin to unfold. When the group enters a cave, they find paintings etched into the stone walls depicting a mammoth of his family. The mammoths are hunted by humans and slain. This is Manny's story. Diego shares a common enemy with him, the humans. Yet Manny shows Diego a path beyond revenge. Diego sees Manny's love for the baby reflect the love for the cub depicted in the painting as it's ravaged by the hunters. This is a strong shift for Diego as he begins to understand Manny and more importantly, the scars of a once precious family that now haunt him. Diego realises that he is not the only one with scars seemingly beyond repair. And yet by sharing this moment with Manny, he understands that they are one and the same, both victims of tragedy. Yet Manny shows Diego he hasn't been consumed by the hatred and resentment. Instead he can grow above this self-destruction and strive for good, as Manny is with the baby. Diego learns that he doesn't have to be defined by the heartbreaking tragedy he once experienced, and that by being so intertwined with his old pack, these emotions have been normalised as a fundamental pillar of his relationship with them. Every decision predicated on this. Diego sees the world in a different light due to the people he's surrounded with. Next, the group are caught in an underground eruption. Diego almost falls into a river of lava but is saved by Manny, who almost dies in the process. Diego is confused and asks why he did it, in which Manny replies, that's what you do in a herd. Diego harbours clear confusion as he knows Soto's tribe would never have risked their lives for his. Manny introduces Diego to the concept of having each other's backs, and shows him the power of being part of a tribe that truly looks out for one another, no matter the risk, not just when it's in their own best interests. He also realises that Manny considers him to be part of the tribe, all the while he is leading them to their deaths. Diego begins to consider the prospect of a tribe that values one another equally and is strong enough to die for one another. Perhaps this even breaks the ceiling of perception for what a true herd could be, and a potential for one so strong, so unstoppable, that the collective would die before they threw one member to the wolves. Then, in the evening, around the campfire, the baby takes his first steps, and despite Diego's protests, walks straight over and wraps his arms around Diego in a great big hug. This moment opens Diego's eyes to the innocence of the child, and how wrong he could be about the pure hatred and spite he harbours towards all humans, something Diego would never have experienced had he not left the toxicity of his old tribe. He was able to get a glimpse of one's innocence before the effect of an in-group's culture and belief system could influence them. Had this baby been a few years older, he may have cowered from Diego, a predator humans were forced to hunt in order to run them out of the lands to keep themselves safe. Just as Diego feared them and wanted so desperately to enact revenge and kill them, here, Diego comprehends the extent to which we are shaped by our friend groups, and how important finding the most complementary ones are to nurturing the very best versions of ourselves. Diego now reaches a pivotal moment in the story, where he realises just how much his new tribe means to him. He has to let go of the hatred and resentment he harboured for the humans, and comes clean about his original plan to lead them all into a trap. Diego is transformed, all due to the growth and development he experienced as a part of being a new herd. Manny and Sid taught Diego what it truly meant to be part of a herd. They loved him as one of their own, risked their lives for him, challenged and encouraged him to become a better person, and showed him what love and compassion could achieve, all culminating in the Diego that now stood before them. During the showdown between his newfound herd and Soto's pack, 
Diego comes between Soto and Manny, knowing firsthand how much stronger Soto is, risking his life for Manny. Diego is no longer a lone wolf corrupted by the hatred and vengefulness of his obsessed leader, but instead part of a group that cared for one another's growth, development and general existence, a group that he'd do anything to protect. As the struggle ensues, the film draws to a close as fittingly for a child's animated film, Soto is impaled and killed by a set of icicles. An injured Diego then makes it to a clearing to watch Manny and Sid reunite the baby back to the humans. As we watch an emotional Diego gaze out into the distance, we realise how Diego's perspective is completely transformed based on the people he surrounded himself with. From a saber-toothed tiger obsessed with revenge, violence, hatred and deception, viewing the world through a lens of revenge at all costs, to one capable of appreciating the beauty of an innocent child being reunited with his tribe. Something Diego was deprived of all those years ago, yet now he understands the value of one's herd. Just as the child is reunited with his tribe, Diego has finally found his own, one that is capable of bringing the best out of him, nurturing his best and worst traits to help him become the very best he can be. And even though Diego sacrificed everything he ever knew, his old life, his old friends, his old self, he was now free to become the very best saber-toothed tiger he could be. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. This quote might spark a profound chord in your heart, or you may see it as nothing more than a motivational gimmick, but there is no denying the layer of truth embedded within it. As we've learned from the insight gained through Diego's journey in Ice Age, we become a personification of the people we surround ourselves with. We embody the culture embedded within our friend groups as a real part of ourselves. Fundamental threads of our personality woven by the fabric of our friendship groups, moulded by our discord, our thoughts and the very ideas we share. Cultivate your environment to leave behind those that corrupt your life with lies, deceit, malice and toxicity and fill your life with people who encourage you to improve, people who challenge you to strive for success, people who care for your well-being and genuinely value you for who you are. If you like this video and want to see more like this, consider giving a like and subscribing. Thank you.